Hi, I'm Brett, and this is our video update for the Subaru uh, new 2 litre direct injection engine. Now, I'm being a little bit generic here because this engine's actually out of a BRZ, it's normally aspirated, but this forms the basis of Subaru's new um, range of direct injection engines. The MY13 Forester XT is now a direct injection turbo engine. A lot of similar components, but obviously turbo compared to normally aspirated. The new 2 litre engine in the MY15 Subaru Impreza WRX, which comes out in March, Australia here 2014, is a similar one again. And what I wanted to take this opportunity, this is one of our engine rebuilds that we're doing on a BRZ and um, the Toyota 86 family of cars with a turbo upgrade. Um, one of them is, this particular one has actually got a, uh, a high power supercharger kit being fitted. There is a limit to how much forced induction we can put into the factory standard normally aspirated engine with regard to piston and rods. Um, we're doing an upgrade to be able to take more positive boost, higher crankcase combustion pressures. Remembering these are 12 and a half to one static compression, not normally designed for high boost forced induction. We're talking low boost on the original factory engine. Do a rebuild, you can really crank up the power. You know, 250 kilowatts at the wheels is a target that is realistic. What I wanted to show you today though was the difference between this family of engine and what we call the old or the EJ series of engines which originally come out many, many years ago, 1.6, 1.8, 2 litre uh, forged piston engine um, as in the um, Australian delivered O2 SDI. Then in 2005 they went for the EJ25 engine which was the more common model around the world. In Japan they stuck with the EJ20 twin scroll engine. Um, this engine, the 2.5, hyper-eutectic, forged pistons, um, some ringland piston failures if you push the engine too hard, too much ignition timing, too much boost. That engine is very, very popular around the world. Uh, interestingly, um, MY15 uh, SDI, which is being sold here in Australia, middle of 2014, will still come with the old EJ 2.5 litre engine, even though it's in the new shape body. And now we're moving into the new FA20 engines, some people call it um, FT86, but most of you guys will know it as the BRZ Toyota 86. So here we have, you'll notice, it's got a, an offset rod compared to original straight rod. One of the big advantages is when this, um, these rods are fitted in the engine, and you can see this engine hasn't been dismantled yet, you can actually access the bottom of the um, Conrod journal to pull the end caps off, to be able to pull the pistons out, because this engine, unlike the old EJ engines, don't have ports to access the gudgeon pin to pull the pistons out and then dismantle the engine that way. My engine builder is behind the camera will appreciate this new design because it actually makes it easier in some ways to pull these new engines apart. Um, you'll notice um, the whole en engine assembly is completely different compared to this EJ 2.5. Um, again, a lot of things are similar, but things have changed enough so there's not a lot of parts, if any, that are interchangeable. This being the part that bolts to the back of the uh, transmission. So we then talk about the head. Uh, these new engines have got followers with roller rockers, um, completely different cam and rocker assembly over and control. They've also got a variable, completely different inlet and exhaust variable. Um, camshaft control as you can see on the end here. This, um, I've got one here. This out is the um, variable cam control out of an EJ 2 litre, 2.5 litre engine which sits on the end of the camshaft and allows the um, ECU to control camshaft advance and retard. Um, and then you'll see the difference in this head also. It's got the rocker cover and then it's got a sub-assembly which this whole, will, whole camshaft and VVT control will come off separate from the head. Um, you'll also notice the absence of any gaskets in around here. It's all silicon gasket. Um, interestingly, the joke we've got at the moment, the only gaskets in the engine other than some um, oil seals is actually um, uh, rocker cover gaskets and head gaskets everywhere else on the engine, including behind the, this part here, which is the engine cover, because you've got to remember it's got a timing chain, not a timing belt with um, God knows how many bolts holding it on. It's just a silicon seal. And you'll notice in behind here is the oil pump, um, the oil pressure switch that comes from the oil supply line, and the noses that cover the variable cam control assembly. I'll just 
put that back carefully there. It's a big assembly just to pull that off as well. And then remembering, comparing this head here off the BRZ. Um, unfortunately, this is not exactly a good example of a good condition head, but it's an example of what the two point, the 2002 Subaru Impreza STI engine is. Um, direct actuation of the shims and buckets with the camshaft pushing straight down onto the valves. A lot different assembly. Um, only one rocker cover with one head and no sub-assembly in between. Um, I think that's about it that I can show you from a comparison point of view. Stay tuned, we've got a lot of updates that we're going to show you with these engine rebuilds. We've got two on the go at the moment for um, high performance upgrades with a lot more positive boost pressure and really look forward to helping you learn more about your Toyota, Subaru, Mazda and Mitsubishi or in this particular case the BRZ wherever you are in the world. And for now, wishing you a fantastic new year here for 2014. On behalf of MRT Performance, I'm Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.